Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about one of my absolute favorite topics to think about, and that is the intersection between software and business, specifically how to build a SaaS. If you're not familiar, that is software as a service. It's basically any piece of software that you pay a recurring subscription for. Think a Dropbox or something like that, even Gmail. If you pay for Gmail, that's software as a service. It is the ultimate business model. And because of that, it's something that most developers that I know of who are interested in business want to achieve. They want to have a working SaaS. Now you may have noticed this video is called how not to build a SaaS. So I'm not speaking as someone that has a working successful SaaS because I don't, but I have tried to launch business ideas a few different times. And I've noticed a recurring set of pitfalls Falls both in myself and with other people I know who have tried to do similar things. And so today I want to talk about three of those, the three most common pitfalls that I see when people try to build and launch a SaaS. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. The first way I think people go wrong when they're trying to build a SaaS is that they create a solution in search of a problem. What do I mean by that? A solution in search of a problem tends to look like this, right? Like you're thinking about starting a business and you just brainstorm ideas and you come up with an idea, you think it's great and you want to go ahead and build it. And that is a solution in search of a problem because you have this solution, right? This idea, but you don't know if it's actually going to be solving a real problem for people. And the whole thing about business in general, buying products is that you're not going to buy something that isn't valuable for you. And when it comes to SaaS, usually that value is delivered in solving a problem for the end user. And so basically this is not validating your idea is what a lot of people would call it. But when I've gone wrong in the past, when I've seen other people go wrong in the past, it's usually because they're sitting brainstorming ideas in isolation and they don't have actual customers yet. They don't know if anyone would even buy their idea. And so I would say the solution to this one is talk to potential customers first, see what their pain points are, and then craft your solution based on their actual pains, not on what you think would be valuable to them. Okay, the second pitfall is related to the first one, and that is focusing almost completely on the code and not on marketing or sales. Something I've had to learn the hard way is that marketing is just as essential to a product as the code is, but I think it's pretty important before you even start writing code to know who your end user is, to know who your customer is, and to go ahead and begin talking to and getting to know those people. Speaking of niches, that is, I think, very related to our last point, which is focusing on consumers and not on businesses. This one is more of a personal opinion of mine, but I think most people would agree it's way harder to sell to consumers as opposed to businesses. And why is this? It's because businesses, to a certain extent, are incentivized to spend money, right? If I'm a business and I have a lot of revenue, I'm going to be taxed on that revenue as net income unless I can offset it with expenses. And so businesses have expenses. Businesses spend money on all different kinds of things. And that's pretty different than a consumer. To get a consumer to part with $100 a month, I think for most people would be significant. But to get a business to part with $100 a month would be nothing, especially if you're solving a really painful problem for them. They'd be willing to pay thousands of dollars in some cases to solve certain problems. And so that goes back to the first point. You need to be sure that you're solving a real and valuable problem. But all the same, I think even if you are solving a real problem for people, it's going to be a lot easier to get businesses to pay for that solution. And so if you can pick a certain kind of business in a niche, that'll help our second point with marketing, but it'll also help you craft your solution to a very specific type of business. And I think it'll make life just a lot easier for you in the long run. So that's it. Those are my three biggest pitfalls that I've seen in myself and others when trying to create a SaaS. Of course, there are other problems. There's a lot of mistakes you can make as you have something that's starting to work and scale. And that set of challenges is completely different than the ones you have when you're first starting out. But when you're first starting out, I think these are really important things to be aware of and to pay attention to. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like this video, I love talking about the intersection of software and entrepreneurship. So if you liked this, you'd probably like my other videos, consider subscribing. And regardless, remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.